Good morning and welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We continue our uh, gospel lessons through the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. This morning talking about eternal life. Uh, Next week, uh, the implications about communion that are in this uh, passage from the sixth chapter of John. So uh, we continue with that. Uh, Also this morning, I just want to bring to your attention a couple of the announcements that were in your Wednesday announcements that came around uh, this week. Um, We are planning a worship service on a Thursday evening in September, September the 9th at 7 p.m. It's going to be a service of prayer around the cross. It's a quiet, contemplative service. It's intended to give folks a chance to just sort of relax and unload and uh, give uh, God a chance to hear what the particular concerns and needs are in our life uh, on these days. It's a service that we're doing in conjunction with uh, Living Water Lutheran Church, uh, New Journey Lutheran Church, and New Covenant Lutheran Church, and uh, we look forward to that. It'll be in our space here at Christ the Lord Lutheran Church. I hope that you can plan to to be a part of that. also in our announcements, we're still gathering in um, money and uh, for the jugs for the Navajo mission. There's a word about that. You can read about what the idea is there, there but they have succeeded in, in, in getting the water station completed. And uh, the way that I th- understand that it will work is there'll be uh, cards that will be given to individuals and they can insert their card and then the machine will uh, provide uh, the water in the jugs for them. Uh, so this is all just a great advance for the Navajo Evangelical Lutheran Mission, and we're glad to be a part of that. So uh, also there's a note in those announcements. It's just a small box at the bottom of the page. We're going to resume uh, our conversation and communion worship. Uh, it will be for the summer months, while we're still doing one service at 9 o'clock in the sanctuary, we will do the conversation and communion at 8 o'clock in the admin building. Now, it's usually only a few people at that uh, service, uh, anywhere from 2 to 10, uh, and if uh, it feels something like something would be comfortable for you as we see the numbers rising in the um, COVID uh, situation, um, you're welcome to come, check that out. Uh, it's about 35 minutes of conversation about the gospel lesson and then prayer and communion. So if anyone would like to be a part of that, you're invited, of course, to come. Uh, In our worship this morning, in addition to the uh, prelude, which is provided by Jill, and the postlude by Lincoln, uh, there will be a solo by Jacob Soulier. Uh, It's in the place of the Lord's Prayer as a part of our Holy Communion service, so I invite you to uh, to enjoy that during that part of the service today as well. With that, let's take this time now during the prelude and prepare ourselves for worship with a time of prayer and reflection.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question more ways to way differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. 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 grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. So then, putting away falsehood. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction. 
Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread come down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has been sent and seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When people come to the end of life and know it and have a little time left, that time becomes particularly precious. As a hospice chaplain, I've seen people turn their thoughts both backward to take a look at the lives they've lived and forward to wonder what lies beyond this life. I've also seen people seize the moment as the opportunity to live more fully in the present. Not the let's go skydiving kind of thing, but rather in hospice, most folks are in care because their health doesn't permit that. But I have seen people who reconnect or connect more deeply with their family and friends. They make amends. They say, I love you, in ways that they hadn't said it before. They create new and joyful memories with their loved ones. Jack was one such man. He claimed to have almost died so many times that this last one that was happening more slowly was a real gift to him. He had survived the Bataan Death March, waking up each morning to find the person sleeping on his left or his right was dead. He claimed that in a weak moment, he agreed to be baptized by a Catholic chaplain on the march, but then the next day, he says, I came to my senses and I asked him to take it back. Jack was not a Christian. He was not a follower of any religion. He believed that when you died, you died, and that was that. Yet he met with me often in his last couple of months, talked about all matters of life and death. The most important thing to him was that the time that he had left, he would gather his family around him, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, an ex-wife, siblings. It was a raucous household with people always coming and going, lots of noise and lots of conversation, lots of games and teasing and playfulness. There was no tiptoeing around the dying man in the other room 
or pretending that death was not around the corner. He wanted his last days to be full of life, full of his life and full of their lives. And isn't that the point, he said, to be full of life to the end. And he allowed that if I was right and he was wrong, then he hoped that after death was also full of life. And friends, you know, I really think that he got our Christian faith better than a lot of Christians do. We focused on Jesus as bread last week. Bread in its infant variety, full of delight and joy. Bread as an essential nourishment, the source of life. In our gospel for today, we start there again. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I am living bread. Whoever eats will live. The bread that I give is for the life of the world. The focus here is on life. However, we tend to put the emphasis on the word forever. And that's not entirely wrong. Seven times in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, we hear those words eternal life or forever. The words life forever and eternal life are the same words in the Greek language. It is a mistake, however, to view eternal life as simply an unending progression of the years. The word for eternal is aonios, which carries the idea of quality as well as quantity. In fact, eternal life is not really associated with years at all, as it is independent of time. It is bigger than time. It is outside of time. We might say that the life we live is a forever life, a life which re reflects the qualities of the eternal. Okay, that's a little vague, but, but stay with me. The words from the sixth chapter of John are all in the present tense. The person who believes has eternal life, not will have eternal life. The Bible is trying to convince us that the plan, the vision, and the destiny of God is for us to believe in Christ and live and love forever, beginning now, today. God wants to give us eternal life now, not when we die, not in the future, not at the end of time, but now. When we eat the bread of love, the bread of Jesus, we begin eternal life right now, in this moment, Today, we begin to live a life of love. Near the end of Jesus' life, in his high priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus tries to be clear about this when he prays to God. He says, Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Here, Jesus equates eternal life with a knowledge of God. And the way we acquire that knowledge of, with God is through knowing the Son. Now, the key lies in understanding what the Bible means by this word, to know. This is much more than just intellectual knowledge. It can be seen in hundreds of biblical scriptures, like, for instance, Adam knew Eve, his wife and she conceived and bore Cain. Now, Adam didn't just know Eve intellectually. That won't produce children. He had an intimate, personal experience with her. This was speaking of a knowing between man and woman, which is the most intimate knowing that we have. Likewise, when Jesus said eternal life is knowing God, He's speaking of having an intimate, close, personal relationship with God. Now, how does one do that with a God who is out there, something which is unseen and untouchable and unapproachable? 
Well, you simply cannot. And that is the real power and wonder of the gift of incarnation. The gift of God becoming human in the person of Jesus. In a Jesus who lived and talked and touched and was touched, God makes possible the impossible. He makes it possible that we can at least conceive the idea of an intimate, loving, personal relationship with Jesus. And by extension then, with God. That is awesome. We tend to get our ideas of heaven mixed up with Jesus' teaching about eternal life. You've heard that it's said that heaven is all pie in the sky by and by. But Jesus says eternal life is steak on your plate while you wait. Jesus is the bread of life now. Jesus is the bread of love. Jesus is the energy of love. Jesus is the power of love, the vitamins and the minerals and the proteins of love. When we consume the presence of Christ, we take in all of these energies of love. I mean, what is more intimate than eating and digesting food so it actually becomes who and what we are? A French Roman Catholic philosopher has said, someday... After we have mastered the wind, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for the second time in the history of the world, we will have discovered fire. Are you harnessing the energies of love in your life? When we eat the bread of life, Jesus, we are taking into our hearts and into our bodies the energy to love on this day and forever. Jesus is the love of God for all people, all people everywhere. Jesus is the forgiveness of God, indwelling in our hearts, living within our hearts and our actions and our attitudes. Jesus is the peace of God, indwelling within us and flowing forth in all that we say and do. The person who believes in me has eternal life, Jesus says. Not in the future, but now. We are living the forever life. We are living the best life. We are living the fullest possible life, as Jack would have said. The word eternal life is found 400 times in the Bible. And the word expresses the very essence of God, that God is forever, that God's love is forever, that the Lord God rules forever and ever, that God lives forever. And those who are known by God shall also live and be loved by God forever. Forever describes the very core essence of what God is, and therefore the very core essence of God's plan for us today and in the future. Don't be hung up, though, on the idea of forever in terms of time stretching on and on into the future. Think also of depth and height, of being infinitely full, of being never running out. Think of overflowing and abundance. Someone asked what eternal life meant and said simply, there is so much life that you just cannot contain it. It's recorded that in Rome, Christians knew their God so intimately that they sang his praises as they were being burned at the stake. And Nero, the emperor, sticking his fingers in his ears, said, Why must these Christians sing? Surely Paul had this in mind when he wrote, Who will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Will hardship or distress, persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. 
For I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jack said, death is death is death. And it's true. Abraham is dead. Paul is dead. Luther is dead. John Kennedy is dead. Albert Schweitzer is dead. My mother is dead. My father is dead. My friend Gordon is dead. And to the chorus of dead, 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 the gospel message simply sings triumphantly, life, 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 forever and ever and ever. Amen. The gospel tells us that there is no cutoff on our relationship with God. To know God is to be alive with God. How long, how far, how deep is God's life? How long, how far, how deep is God's love and God's mercy and God's forgiveness, God's grace? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Forever is a strong word. It's a powerful word. It's a victorious word. Forever is the word of God which fills you and me this morning and every morning for an eternity. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel. For congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation. For shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun. For lakes, rivers, oceans, contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice for corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially Judy, Ellen, Landon, Bruce, Gary, Bud, Charles, Ken, Catherine, Stu, Michelle and Ryan, George, Jaron David, Tony, Patsy, Stacy, Terry, Robert, Larry, Dan, 
Marie, June, Kristen, Scott, Susan. The Cruz family, Sarah, Donna, Glenn, Michael and Teresa, Jory and Lester, Mike, Lisa, Rosemarie, Ruth, Jane, Lois, Dee, Paul, George, Sheila, Larry, Amanda, Ellen, Randy, Paul. For Tom, Debbie, Mary, Ellen, John, Monica, Joel, Jeff, Mary Lou, Jan, Kate, Mary Sue, Judy, Ron, Joel, Jean, Donna, and Jean. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set the table to prepare yourself and call us to the peace of our Gather us and stone us and strengthen us in the seal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of our own. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we have ever asked. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.